<laughs> the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. Johnson's self-polishing glow coat present Marion and Jim Jordan as Fibber McGee and Molly with Jimmy Shields, Bill Thompson, and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Liza. Far-off countries like India and Arabia, people take off their shoes before going into their houses. That's one way, of course, to keep from wearing out your floors. In America, especially during this month of January, that would be rather inconvenient. And as a matter of fact, we have a much better way than that to protect our floors. With wax. Genuine Johnson's Wax. The floor polish that has protected the floors in millions of homes over a period of 50 years. Johnson's Wax does two important things. It protects and it beautifies. It protects by spreading a tough wax shield over floors, furniture, and woodwork. A shield that guards these surfaces against scratches, wear, and dirt. It beautifies by giving them a lustrous, satiny glow. Rich, mellow beauty that you can achieve in no other way. And in addition, Johnson's Wax saves you many hours of work throughout the year because it makes cleaning so easy. There are actually over 100 extra labor-saving uses for Johnson's Wax. Johnson waxing your tabletops, windowsills, lampshades, leather goods. You'll find these extra uses listed on every package of genuine Johnson's Wax, paste or liquid. is a big night in Westville Vista, for Gone with the Wind is having its formal opening at the Bijou Theater. The cream of society will be there. So here in their living room, getting ready to use the tickets someone mysteriously sent them, we find the underdone bottom of Westville Vista's upper crust, Fibber McGee and Molly. Hey, Molly, where'd you put that button hook? Button hook. Yeah, button hook. McGee, don't tell me you're going to a formal opening wearing them yellow shoes with the box toes now. <laughs> Why, Molly, you know I wouldn't do no uncouth stuff like that there. <laughs> I want to use it to button my vest. Oh, I see. There, I got it. Well, I hope Harlow Wilcox remembers to send over that size 17 collar. McGee, are you sure there was no message with those tickets? Nope, just the two tickets in an envelope slipped under the front door. Well, I hope we can find out who sent him so we can thank him. Yeah, you bet. It's harder to get tickets for the opening tonight than it is to get a needle through the eye of a camel. Now, what's so hard about getting a needle through the eye of a camel? There's no eye in camel. <laughs> Don't you get it, Molly? I said it's ah, hard. Ah, ain't funny, McGee. Oh, well, it's educational. <laughs> As I always says, Molly, you got to... Hello, daughter! Hello, Johnny! Oh, hello there, old-timer. Did you have a nice Christmas? Sure did. Care to buy a nice Christmas tree? Well, <laughs> now, what would we be doing with a Christmas tree this time of year? <laughs> we don't need one, old-timer. Our carpet is so full of needles now, we're thinking of renting sleeping quarters to a couple of Hindu fakers. <laughs> Tell fella, say, say, what's this sleep here everybody's making such a fuss about? Ain't you here, says Tell fella? That's the time when a, a girl who's at loose ends has a chance to get tied up. <laughs> almost didn't make it. <laughs> oh, say, almost forgot. Here's the collar Mr. Wilcox sent over. Oh, the collar, yeah, thanks. Oh, just a second, old timer. Here's a dime for your trouble. A dime? Well, split my lip and call me Tappy. <laughs> no, no, won't take it. 
<laughs> Why not, old-timer? Oh, I'd lose 15 cents on the deal. Well, how come? I bet Mr. Wilcox a quarter that you wouldn't give me anything. So long, <laughs> Can you beat that, Molly, trying to get money out of Harlow and me? Yes. Gets my goat the way that old tin type is developing. <laughs> well, I'm ready, dearie. Okay, help me on with my tuxedo coat, will you? Okay. Now, now take it easy, McGee. Yeah, I ain't had this coat on since Taft was inaugurated. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, dear, oh, dear. Now you've done it, McGee. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Is it bad, Molly? It's worse than that. It's split all the way up the back. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Well, as the delicatessen man said to the customer, here's a pretty pickle. <laughs> now, listen here. It's no time for joking, McGee. You hurry right over to the tailor and have him mend your coat. Okay, Molly. And go out the back door. It's quicker that way. Okay. Things always happen when a fellow's in a big hurry. Oh! oh. Ooh. Dad rat the dad ratted rattle. Never seen it to fail when a fellow's in a hurry or something. Hey, what's that hanging on Gildersleeve's clothesline? Why, it's a full dress evening coat. Tails and everything. Bet Gildersleeve would never miss it if I sneaked into the yard and borrowed that coat for a couple of hours. <laughs> oh, but of course I'd never dream of doing such a thing. <laughs> I hope this gate of his doesn't squeak. <laughs> quiet, McGee. Okay, I'll be quiet. Hmm, well, feels like a nice coat. I'll try it on. Ah, say, it fits me pretty good. Hey, I know what I'll do. I'll hang my torn coat up in its place. <laughs> there she be. That'll... Oh, oh, for I'll shoot. <laughs> Don't you, don't you, Gildersleeve. It's just me, Fibber McGee, your neighbor. What are you doing in my backyard at this time of the night, neighbor? Well, I, I, I was just looking for, for, for our cat. I, I thought it straight in here. Here, pussy, 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 pussy. Here, pussy, pussy. What kind of a looking cat is it, McGee? Huh? Oh, 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 well, it's one of them uh, Maltese cats. Yeah? You know, yeah, the... Kind with the long orange hair and no tail, hardly. Well, well, uh, that's very interesting. Yes. Uh, what do you call it? Oh, we just call it uh, Malta. Malta, yeah. Uh, here, Malta, milk. <laughs> Small to milk, huh? <laughs> ah, that's very good, McGee. Uh, or is it? Here, pussy, 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 pussy. Oh, uh, here, pussy, pussy, pussy. Here, pussy, pussy, pussy. Here, pussy, pussy, pussy. Here, pussy, pussy, pussy. <laughs> Look here, McGee. I wasn't the one who lost your cat. You can't make me find it either. I'm going in the house. Malta milk. Good night. <laughs> you almost caught me then. Well, I better get back home now. I'll put Gildy's coat back when we get home from the Bijo. Nobody will ever be the wiser. Uh, how are you back, dearie? Yep. How do I look? Oh, where did you get that lovely swallowtail coat? <laughs> well, it wasn't time to get mine fixed, so I, I just borrowed this one. Oh. <laughs> Fits like a glove, don't it? Certainly does. Uh -huh. Especially over the hand. <laughs> I won't have to wear my gloves. <laughs> well, I might as well get started, Molly. Where'd you put the tickets? Here they are, stuck in the mirror. Huh? But for the life of me, McGee, I still can't see why they were sent to us. Now, don't worry about those tickets, Molly. All famous critics get theater tickets on occasions like this here. And since when were you a famous theater critic? Why, didn't I ever tell you about the time I was dramatic editor of the old Chicago Blaze? Uh, a thousand times. <laughs> why, I was so powerful that every time I wrote a favorable criticism of a show, it would act as a hypodermic at the box office. Hypocritical McGee, I was known as in them days. <laughs> 
Hypercritical McGee, the canniest connoisseur of culture that ever calmly called the cards on current camera crop, candidly cussing the crummy quality of clumsy creations and continually causing chorus cuties to cry by composing cruel and cutting comments, <laughs> calmly cracking the conceit of countless corny clowns by constantly clunking course comedians over the conch with critical cabbages, cantaloupes, cauliflowers, and cobblestones, <laughs> and curdling the condensed cream of common kindness from the carminable concessions of Kankakee to the let's go to the show, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> parking space right here, Molly, right next to the theater. <laughs> Good thing I got them brakes fixed. <laughs> hey, why didn't you go in the parking lot, McGee? It's more uptown, you know. <laughs> didn't you see that sign, Molly? What? Fifteen cents for the first hour, twenty-five cents for all evening, and fifty cents for gone with the wind. <laughs> Oh, let's hurry, McGee. I can hardly wait to see Selznick O'Hara. Oh, how do you do, Mr. McGee? And Mr. McGee. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Uppington? Hi, Uppy. <laughs> McGee, maybe she sent us those tickets. I'll find out. Well, I see you're going to be present when Gone with the Wind opens, Uppy. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> it's, um... It's going to be most exclusive, you know. Oh, yes. Yes, only the social leaders of the community have been invited. Oh, yes. We got a pair of tickets. Oh. Mm. Oh, 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 is that so? <laughs> oh, yes. No, Molly, it wasn't her. Well, you look very swanky tonight, Uppy. All dressed up like Mrs. Astor's horse plush. <laughs> Thank you. And speaking of horses, Mr. McGee, your tails are dragging. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, the men are wearing them longer this year, Mrs. Uppington. Oh, my, you look so charming, Mrs. McGee. Oh, thank you. Oh, I always like that dress. I believe it's the one I gave to the rummage sale last fall. <laughs> yes, dearie. I cut it down to fit me and had enough material left over to make a fine pair of drapes for my sitting room. Score one for the home team. <laughs> Say, Happy, uh, how do you like the string of pearls I got Molly for Christmas? Oh, they're divine. Oh, yes. <laughs> but don't you think they'd look better, Mrs. McGee, if you took them out of the shelves? <laughs> Foul ball. Oh, and tell me, my dear, where did you get those shoes? <laughs> I must buy a pair just like them for my cook. 
I bought them at the Bon Ton, baby. Your mother waited on me. <laughs> there goes the ball game, folks. <laughs> my mother and my... Oh, 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 you got me. A good boy. <laughs> Nice going, Molly. Poor old Uppy. She hasn't got any more glamour than a bad cold. Uh, tickets, please. Huh? Oh, yes. Here you are, bud. Left aisle, please. Okay, bud. Oh, come on, Molly. The newsreel is just starting. My, my, it's dark in here, McGee. Yeah. They make it that way so you can see the picture better. <laughs> Just follow me, Molly. Oh, here we are. You coming, Molly? This way, Molly! Oh, hi, fellas. Here's our seats, Molly. There. Ah, boy. Well, hello there, Fibber and Molly. Oh, hello, Mr. Wilcox. Say, Harlow, were you the unknown friend who sent us tickets for these seats? Why, no, folks. In fact, I didn't pay for my ticket either. The management gave me a pass. A pass? Yeah. I got it for my work in building up the matinee business here. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> As Mrs. O'Leary's cow said to the lantern, I know I'm putting my foot in it, but... <laughs> <laughs> How did you build up the matinee business, Mr. Wilcox? Because every day, more housewives are discovering how simple it is to protect and beautify floors and linoleum with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. It's so loud, Mr. Wilcox. Someone might hear you. Oh, well. <laughs> well, it's not only simple, but it's labor-saving. Johnson's glow coat. Oh, Johnson's glow coat is giving these ladies more leisure to enjoy the better things of life. Oh, yes, I see. More time to read books, uh -huh. to rest and relax, uh -huh, yeah. and to attend matinees at the Bijou Theater. Well, I'll be a censored cognomen. <laughs> hey, watch my seat for me, Fibber. I'll be right back. Okay, pal, hurry back. <laughs> hey, Molly, hand me the peanut brittle. Oh. <laughs> watch the news reel. Okay, okay. Sure. Ah, there, my dear, and a good, good evening to you, Fizzle Fizz. Oh, hi, Boomer. Is this seat taken? Yes, it is. All right, I'll sit down there. Hey, what are you doing with that parachute, Boomer? Quiet, Sapadillo. I just crashed. <laughs> Oh, dear, here comes the usher. Uh, pardon me, sir, but could I look at your ticket stub? Who, me? Yes, sir. Ticket stub? Ticket stub. Let's see, where did I put that ticket stub? Let me see, here's a small meat axe. Very handy when you encounter a road hog. Oh, here's a message that my cousin from Australia phoned. It says, uh... Melbourne, J. Boomerang. <laughs> yes, indeed. An unstrung zither. I've been playing fast and loose with a musical widow. <laughs> An emergency hair curler for ladies in straightened circumstances. Uh, here's a second hand, second hand with watch attached. Chain must have got caught on my coat sleeve. Or some other far-fetched excuse. <clears throat> a little pipe of my own invention, made out of meerschaum with a lead bottom. Equally good for smoking or slugging. <laughs> well, well, imagine that. No ticket stub. What's more, I seem to be a check for a beer short. <laughs> Then you haven't got a ticket stop, eh? Evidently not, my lad. Strange, I must have picked up the wrong wallet tonight. Oh, oh what, what does that sign say over there? Run, don't walk to the nearest exit. Peerless advice, I'll take it. Good night, my dear. So long, Patty Wade. <laughs> Imagine that guy crashing in here, Molly. He's got more brass than a $9 tuba. <laughs> Say, McGee, stop squirming around. Well, I'm... Say, what's that I feel under my feet? Now, don't go bothering them, Molly. That's my shoes. 
Your shoes? Yeah, they were pinching me, and I took them off. McGee, I'm ashamed. Oh, well, Chef, what the fuck's going on? Coming here to see Gone with the Wind, well, sitting with the E-Light and taking off your shoes. Nobody will notice it. I'm wearing my black socks. The idea. Put those shoes right back on this very instant, McGee. <laughs> Do I have to? Yes, you have to. Now put them on. All right. I can't get my feet back into them. Well, it serves you right for taking them off in the first place. Oh, I can't get them on, Molly. Let me see. Oh. Huh? McGee, you're trying to put on my shoes. Oh. Let's leave our shoes off, Molly. Here comes Gone with the Wind. Ladies and gentlemen, while the audience at the Bijou Theater is watching Gone with the Wind, Jimmy Seals will sing All the Things You Are. Technicolor shorts were terrific. Oh, I sure go for that red butler, don't yeah, The most wonderful picture I've ever seen. Well, I never thought I'd sit through a picture that took four hours, Molly, but this one was sure worth it. <laughs> Did you like it, Molly? Oh, it was so beautiful. I never enjoyed myself so much in all my life. <laughs> oh, there now, don't take on so I, I got a surprise for you, Molly. I know the perfect finish for an evening like this. Oh, dearie, you're always so thoughtful. Oh, shucks. What is it? Now, let's get a dish of chop suey at Gooey Fooey's barbecue. <laughs> oh, McGee, how can you think of a thing like that at a time like this? We'll do nothing of the kind. Oh, well, shucks. When we get home, I'll fix us a couple of bowls of chili. <laughs> well, you're right, Molly. That would be more appropriate. <sighs> Oh, McGee, I hate to keep bringing it up, but who could have sent us them nice tickets? And why? Oh, don't quit worrying about the tickets, Molly. Here's the car. Hi, mister. Oh, hello there, little girl. Can I have a ride home, please, mister? Can I please? Hmm? <laughs> sure, but... Hey, what's a kid your age doing out so late at night, sis? Curfew must have rung three hours ago. Hmm? Don't you know what it means when the bell rings at nine o'clock? 
o'clock. Uh, curfew? It's on high. <laughs> I guess you don't know what curfew is, Molly. <laughs> I bet you I do, too, I bet you. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, oh McGee, stop it. Get in the car. Okay, okay, we'll all get in the front seat. Okay. Hop in, sis. Quiet there. Staying up for all hours. Bone rides and getting in a buddy's hair. Hmm? Uh, where have you been till this hour, sis? To see Gone with the Wind. Oh. Mm-hmm. Say, ain't that picture a little too old for you? Oh, no, it's brand new. <laughs> I meant, oh, never mind. Well, what part of tonight's performance did you like best, sis? The part when Mr. Boomer was thrown out of the theater on his perch. Let's get in the house, Molly, and get the... To... Oh, boy, I almost forgot about returning this coat to Gildersleeve's clothesline. Now, I... look here, McGee. Oh. I've been waiting for you. Oh, uh, uh, hi, Gildy. Uh, what's on your mind? You know very well what's on my mind, you... You wolf in sheep's clothing. <laughs> oh, no, that's my coat. <laughs> anyway, when you came into my backyard tonight, looking for that blasted cat of yours... Why, McGee wouldn't do a thing like that, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, no? And why not? Because we haven't any cats. Uh, Have we, dearie? <laughs> uh, excuse me, folks. I, I think I hear our phone ring. Stay right there, McGee. Oh, dear. Don't you try to crawl away with my tails between your legs. <laughs> Steve, what on earth is he talking about, McGee? I haven't the faintest idea. You have, too. I have not. You sneaked into my yard like a snake and stole my swallowtail off the line. Well, I was airing it out after New Year's. <laughs> you did it just to keep me from going to the opening tonight. Give me my coat, McGee, right now. Hey, let go, Gildersleeve. Give me a chance to unbutton it. More tricks, eh? No. You give me that. Well, there's the sleeve. You betcha. What? <laughs> give me that. Give me the... <laughs> there's the other Gildersleeve. <laughs> You wait a minute before I get hot under your collar. If you give me a chance, I'll take the rest of your coat off myself. There. There you are. Got it off without the button hook, too. And much obliged. You'll hear more of this, McGee. Oh, yeah. Good night, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> Here, pussy, pussy, pussy. <laughs> Boy, what a night. Three tickets to Gone with the Wind. Gildersleeve tearing up his own swallowtail coat. <laughs> and now for a big busting bowl of chili. <laughs> Go on in, Molly. <laughs> what a night. <laughs> McGee. Huh? Now I know who sent us those tickets. <laughs> who? Some burglars. <laughs> what do you mean? Look, our furniture's all gone. Oh, sure. <laughs> Ripper and Molly will be back in just a moment. While we're waiting, here's an interesting question. How many hours of work can you save during 1940 by using Johnson's self-polishing glow coat? Well, a good many. One woman told me that last year she saved herself 75 hours of work by using glow coat on her kitchen floor alone. That's just like being handed 75 extra hours of time for some of those many things you never find time for. And that's only part of the glow coat story. Glow coat also saves your hands and your back from all the tiresome work of floor scrubbing. There's no rubbing or buffing with glow coat. You simply apply and let dry. And behold, you have a gleaming linoleum floor with bright, fresh colors. Floors that are easy to keep clean. A damp cloth quickly wipes spots and stains right off a glow-coated floor. Glow coat is money-saving, too. It actually makes floors last much longer than unprotected linoleum. If you aren't already using Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, buy a can from your dealer tomorrow. It will save you many hours of work in 1940. <laughs> Folks, our furniture wasn't really stolen. As a matter of fact, we didn't have any in the first place. <laughs> but we did see Gone oh, with the yeah. Wind, and oh, it was wonderful, wasn't it, McGee? Yes, sir, it sure was. You know what I think, Molly? What? I'll bet you if it was handled right, that picture would make a great book. Good night. Good night, all.
This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's self-polishing glow coat we're seeing in Wisconsin, inviting you all to join us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Oh. <laughs>